But before we have a look at Joseph in detail, let's just recap history from Adam to Israel from the book of Genesis. We read of the uh, creation of the world in Genesis 1 on through to 5. We read about the, the tree in the garden, the uh, tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and the tree of life, and how that Adam and Eve fell by disobedience to Yahweh's word, listening to the serpent, and taking the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And uh, how Yahweh promised a, a saviour, or the seed of the woman, that will crush the serpent's head. And the results of the fall were that the uh, Adam and Eve now had a sinful nature, a disposition towards evil, and they had eyes that were affected and ears that were affected by the fall. And they have the first son that they have is Cain, and he's a murderer, the son of Satan. He certainly is of his father, the devil, who slays Abel who was righteous, but Yahweh provides another, a replacement, if you like, Seth, and from Seth we have the line of uh, that leads to Noah, through Enos, or Enosh, Canaan, Mahalal, Jared, or Yared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamach, and finally Noah. And during the flood, Noah is preserved and the seven others with him, eight in total, Noah and his wife and his three sons, Japheth, Shem and Ham. And from Shem, we get the line that leads to Abraham or Abram. And uh, uh, from Shem, we have Afaxad, Salah, Eber and Peleg. And during the days of Peleg, the earth was divided, uh, the, the nations were divided. They were divided into separate regions on the earth through geological upheaval, no doubt, and also through the dispersion of the tribes after Babel. They had different languages. And um, then a few generations later, we have Abram, who's renamed Abraham. So let's have a look at Abraham now. Genesis 11 to 25 details Abraham's life. And um, Abraham, which means high father, uh, is renamed Abraham, uh, father of many. And Yahweh promised Abraham to make a nation and nations from him. Uh, as numerous as the stars in the heavens and the sand of on the seashore. So basically he's going to replace many of the heavenly host that fell or are willful. And um, it's a really an amazing promise. Abraham believes God and acts accordingly. By faith he traveled to the land of Canaan, which was later possessed by Israel. So he's tested in many ways, but Although he doesn't obtain all the promises, he believes God. For example, he, he doesn't actually end up owning all of Canaan. He just manages to own a place to bury his wife. But he looks for a city whose builder and maker is God. That's what we're told in the New Testament. The heavenly Jerusalem. Abraham is tested terribly when the promised son, Isaac, that he waited so long for, that Yahweh asks to sacrifice him. Of course, Yahweh is testing him to see whether he'll be obedient. And as he raises up the knife, Yahweh uh, sends his angel to prevent him. And um, this is a picture of Yahweh, the father, sacrificing his son. And it's a picture of all of us. We all need to bring ourselves as living sacrifices so that we can enter in. Uh, with Yahweh. It doesn't mean we all got start cutting our sons to pieces. It's uh, symbolic. So Abraham's miracle son Isaac is born and and that's after Ishmael, Isaac's brother, who is really the son of the flesh. And Ishmael is the father of many of the Arab nations, not all of them. 
and he's characterized as a wild donkey or a wild donkey of a man or pa, a wild goat or some sort of creature. Um, a son of the flesh. And that doesn't mean an Ishmaelite can't come to Yahweh. If anyone that um, will humble themselves and obey the, 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 the God of Israel and his laws and his Messiah, certainly um, can enter into covenant relationship with the maker of the universe. But the Ishmaelites were not the children of promise, but Isaac was, and uh, he was, uh, Abraham was asked to sacrifice him. And as is said before, Yahweh prevented him from having to do that. And uh, Isaac marries Rebekah, and is the father of Jacob and Esau. So this is in Genesis chapter 17 and um, uh, chapters 30, uh, 21 to 35. So Isaac's son Jacob, Yaakov, is born. We have his life detailed in Genesis 25 to uh, Genesis chapter 50. And D Jacob desires the things of God, unlike his profane brother Esau or Edom. Here characterized or pictured as the, the goat. He's not a very happy goat. Because Jacob has got the birthright and the blessing. Esau's not too happy about that. Although Esau didn't really value those things anyway. Until he lost them. Jacob marries Leah and Rachel. Uh, he he wrestles with the angel when he has to come back to the land of Israel. He has to wrestle with the angel. And that angel really is Yeshua. He's not an Edomite. But uh, the angel of Yahweh blesses uh, Jacob. And um, we need to wrestle with the angel of the Lord. And... Uh, we need to obtain the blessing personally. We all need to have our penile, our, our meeting with Yahweh, to come face to face with the Mashiach. And uh, Jacob is uh, saved by God and his fears prove unfounded by the grace of God. Uh, Esau's 400 men that come to prevent Jacob from coming into the land are, are placated, but not through Jacob's tricks, but through Yahweh's favor. Jacob is renamed Israel and becomes the father of the 12 tribes of Israel through Leah and Rachel and their two maidservants. So uh, Rachel and Leah, uh, Jacob's two wives, they have two maidservants or handmaids, Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, and Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, and through Rachel, Leah, Bilhah, and Zilpah, Jacob has the twelve sons, which become the twelve sons of Israel, or the twelve tribes. From Leah, we have Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Asachah, and Zebulun. And from Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, we get Dan and Naphtali. And from Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, we get Gad and Asher. And from Rachel herself, who uh, has many problems trying to conceive, but eventually does, and gives birth to Joseph and later Benjamin. And although she doesn't have many sons, Joseph uh, is promised to be, uh, to be very fruitful. Uh, through Jacob's blessing of Joseph and the trials that Joseph goes through fits him for that honor. Jacob um, also has a daughter, Dina, through Leah. So these are the 12 tribes of Israel, or Jacob renamed Israel, which means prince with God, or someone that is straight. Yes, so Yahweh makes someone straight out of someone a little bit crooked, but who desired the things of God, unlike his profane brother Esau. So that's a little bit 
of the history of the world, if you like, from Adam to Joseph. Now we'll have a look at Joseph himself. Now, genealogies, family lines, are very important to Yahweh. And before we get started, let's have a little look at DNA. Your DNA heritage never dies and never fades away. DNA stores your ancestral identity and characteristics like a stack of books with all the information to make you physically. Biblically, the seed line of the race that you belong to is determined by who your father is, not your mother, although it's important to have good mums. So if you trace your family line through your father and then his father and his father, you'll find out what race you are from or what tribe or nation. So the lost tribes of the house of Israel may not know who they are, but they have not disappeared. They have not become diluted. All the biblical genealogies are patriarchal. So that means that you're your father's son and his father before him and so on and so forth. So the seed line never diminishes. So the actual 70 nations that are mentioned in Genesis after the flood still exist physically. They don't get diluted. No matter how much people mix the nations around, you might have people in America that are from a number of different nations, but uh, they still belong to their ancestral family lines. And there are many in the world today, especially in places like America or Australia or New Zealand, but not only those places, Canada, but elsewhere, that are from the lost tribes. And uh, Joseph was promised some pretty amazing promises. We'll have a look at that now.